Master Higgins is back. That's right, this time on the Heavy Metal Gamer Show I want to review Adventure Island 2, or the technical name, Hudson's Adventure Island 2. But for short, I'm gonna keep it at Adventure Island 2. Now to me, Master Higgins is a bit of an underrated video game character, especially in the platformer scene. While he isn't completely forgotten by many, the Adventure Island series kinda has a cult following, and he's not really labeled right up there with Sonic or Mario. Adventure Island 2 was developed by Now Production Corporation and published by Hudson Soft. It was released on the NES in 1991. It was also released on the Game Boy. In this review, I'm just going to focus on the NES version. A long while back, I did a review of the first game of the Adventure Island series, so I figured it was time for me to review one of the sequels. And really, I might as well go in order with this series, which I do with most games that I've reviewed so far. I just kind of like to keep it in order. Of course, there are some game series out there that I might skip around a bit with. Now, I used to play Adventure Island 2 back when I was younger. I know I have mentioned many times about having a relative that had a box full of NES games. Well, he had the Adventure Island games on the NES, so I got to spend some time with this game and even the first one as well. Later on I had friends that owned Adventure Island 2 so they would come over and bring the game over and we would play it for a few hours. The story behind Adventure Island 2 goes like this. Princess Leilani is safe, which you saved her ass in the first game. Well this time her sister Tina has been kidnapped by the evil witch doctor. You will go through eight islands that feature multiple levels to kick the shit out of all the enemies throughout the game. Although you won't be alone in doing this. You will have help with friendly dinosaurs, which you will ride and you get them by collecting playing cards hidden inside an egg. You have the blue Camptosaurus, which attacks with his tail, a red Camptosaurus that can breathe fire, a Pterodon, which can fly over obstacles and drop stones, and finally an Elasmosaurus, which is the only dinosaur that will help you out underwater, especially in the underwater stages. On top of that, it will help you swim faster. Sounds easy, right? Well, it's not. Adventure Island 2 can be a tough game, especially with level layout. Each of the eight islands have a boss battle that you will have to fight, although if the boss defeats you, they will move to another area, which can be a bit annoying, but at the same time, it adds to the difficulty, so I can't really complain much. That kind of reminds me in Super Mario Bros. 3, if you don't beat one of the Koopa kids, the airship will move to a different location on the map. Now, like the first game, you must get to the end of the level before your health bar runs out, which is kind of like a timer. If you are good enough, you can get through these stages with no issues, but you also have to pay attention to what you are doing and where you are going and avoid enemies. Like in the first game, to take down your enemies, you can either use one of the dinosaurs, like I mentioned earlier, or just throw the stone axe. You can't just jump on them like in other platformer games where you can jump on an enemy. Now, there are a few new things in Adventure Island 2 that the first game did not have. The first thing I want to bring up is there's no checkpoint system in each level. If you die in a level, you have to start at the beginning. And I like that. It makes it tough, but so what? The game is not going to hold your hand, and it makes you work to get to the end of each level. Of course, the levels are quite short compared to other games out there. The next thing I want to mention that is very new in the Adventure Island series is the inventory system. Before you begin a level, you can choose what dinosaur or weapon you want to use. I think that is cool, and you have a certain amount of spots to save everything in. This will help you out later in the game, especially if you get in a bind. Now, like the first game, you will find eggs throughout the level that will allow you to get a stone axe, a card for a dinosaur, extra points, and even that famous skateboard so you can move quickly through the levels. Not only that, after you defeat a level, you get to go to a quick bonus round where you will pick an egg and you can get 100 points, 2,000 points, and even an extra life, which is really nice, especially if you're one that likes to try to get a high score or if you need extra lives throughout the game. The graphics for Adventure Island 2 are pretty good. To be honest, it looks like the first game, but with an upgrade here and there. Everything seems to be in more detail, which is great. The character sprites are nice, the enemy sprites are great, the level layouts are fun, and can be difficult at times. The backgrounds are great, the game is colorful. The game does glitch here and there, but it's nothing major. It's really a minor flaw to me, and I don't find it to be breaking the game or anything like that. Not much I can really complain about. The music and sound effects are great. Now, the first game had awesome music. Well, this time around in Adventure Island 2, the music is just as good, if not better, and I find it to be a bit catchy. Is it the most well-known music in gaming? Far from it. But a lot of time and effort went into composing the music for this game. As for the sound effects, nothing I can complain about. I wouldn't say they are anything special or well-known, 
but they do fit the game, and really that is all that matters. The controls are good. Moving around is easy. Jumping and running is easy. Sometimes they can be a little bit slow at responding. Same thing with slowing down your character, but it doesn't make the game unplayable. Throwing your stone axe is very easy. Using the dinosaurs for their weapons is easy. The controls are very easy to understand. I don't think of one gamer that would have an issue with this game, unless they've never played a platformer before. Overall, Adventure Island 2 is very fun. It has a few flaws, but for the most part, the gameplay is great. The graphics are nice. The music and sound effects are great. The controls are pretty good. I like the new features added to this game. I like the difficulty, even though some parts can be a bit frustrating. I think Adventure Island 2 is a great sequel, and it's really a very nice start to the series, especially since the first game is very well done as well. If you enjoy platformers and you enjoy the first Adventure Island game, you will enjoy Adventure Island 2. If you want to pick up Adventure Island 2, looking at rarityguide.com, it's 52% rare, which isn't bad. I think you might be able to find it out there at a local game store that sells retro games. Looking at eBay, it's not bad on pricing. The lowest I seen was $19 to as high as $50 for a complete copy, box, manual, and everything. But most copies are around $22 to $28, which isn't bad. I know I seen a copy at my local game store a while back for about $23. It was a loose copy, but it was their only copy they had, which I should have picked it up, but I didn't. I'm kind of kicking myself because I'm pretty sure it's gone by now. There are some copies of the Japanese version, which would be for the Famicom, that are around $14 to as high as $28 for a box copy. Of course, this is on eBay, which isn't bad, especially if you like to pick up imports. That is a very reasonable price. If you want to get the game in digital form, it was released on the Nintendo 3DS and the Wii Virtual Console. I'm pretty sure you can find it on there for a reasonable price. Adventure Island 2 was also released on another portable game console in 1992 known as Game 8. No, not Gamergate, Game 8. But the game was under a different name titled Kiki Island, and it features different boss characters and stage layouts. Now, the Game 8 is a handheld console manufactured by the Bit Corporation in the early 1990s. It was released in Australia, parts of Europe, Asia, Argentina, and the United States. Matter of fact, I didn't even know there was such a thing until I was doing research for this review, which that made me look into more info just on the Game 8 alone. Now, that got me thinking, I wonder if there's an emulator out there for it. Well, there is, but the only one that supports it is MESS which stands for Multi-Emulator Super System, which to shorten it for you, it's an emulator for numerous game consoles and computers. It's kind of like MAME, but for everything. I did check on eBay for anything on the Game 8 handheld console, and I found one for $61.45. Of course, I didn't buy it, but that's the price I seen on there. And you know what? That's not bad, actually. As for the prices on some of the games out there, they range from as low as $12 to as high as $80. It all depends on the game. Now there are a handful of games in the Adventure Island series, ranging from New Adventure Island on the TurboGrafx-16, Super Adventure Island on the Super Nintendo, Adventure Island 3 on the NES, Super Adventure Island 2 on the Super Nintendo, and there was even a fourth game on the NES titled Adventure Island 4, but it was only released in Japan. Adventure Island did return in 2009 on the Wii as a WiiWare game, and the game is called Adventure Island The Beginning, which I myself have never heard of or even seen before. I might have to check that game out. Of course I would need a Wii for that, but at a later time I plan to get a Wii and a Wii U. It's just that this time I haven't picked one up. I would love to see a return of Master Higgins for the modern consoles in some way, shape, or form. Personally, I'd like to see him in a new platformer. I think it would be awesome, but I don't see that happening anytime soon, which is sad because this is one of those games that I think would be perfect for a new start in the series. Hell, maybe even a remaster from the ground up of the first three games of the series. Imagine if this game had the same treatment as DuckTales Remastered. That'd be really badass. At a later time, I do plan to review most, if not all, the games in the Adventure Island series. Well, that's it for this review of Adventure Island 2. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.